want to get to uh, talking to Yo, calling in from Texas. Hey, Yo, what's going on? Good evening, Dan. What's up, Bryce? How's it going? How's it going, Yo? <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. All right, awesome. so what do you want to call in about? Well, I, I am curious, like, what are some of the vegan diet that is, like, really helping you, like, make it through the day with, like, some energy, you know? Well, you know, uh, what, when it comes to... Uh-huh. Do you have more to the question? Oh, uh, no. I, I'm Okay. I was stopping. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, I mean, like... You know, energy um, in the human body um, obviously comes from uh, complex processes, but the, it's a the metabolic process of of how we get it is like basically like glycogen synthesis, right? Which is happening in like the liver and the muscles and stuff. And so, like, there, there's this idea that oh, meat is like this thing that gives us energy um, because it has lots of protein, but really, the most of what we get our energy from is carbohydrates. Um, and so that's going to be like your breads, um, and, 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 and things of that nature. So like, there's a common misconception there that because, oh, like they, they, people feel starved for part of the day and then they eat meat, they feel really energized. But if you feel starved for part of the day, then yeah, you're going to be low energy and then you get some food, then yeah, you're going to feel better. And, um, I, you know, have a plant-based diet. So, uh, if I'm really quick and I'm on the go and I don't have time to eat a lot, you know, I, I will have like a protein cookie. Or, or things like that to get me through the day. But the thing is, you know, I was already doing protein supplements because I was, I used to lift and stuff a lot. I was already kind of taking that stuff. So yeah, adding that to my diet or, or making it even more of a regular thing, that was nothing for me um, because you, you do have a certain protein yeah, intake that protein bars out there. Yeah. And vegan ones too, well, you know, obviously there's that, but like every human yeah. being needs a certain um, protein intake per day. And it's important because like, that is a problem. And I, I was actually kind of having a lower intake for a little bit um, during my, my switch. And I, I needed to up that up a bit um, because I wasn't getting my protein from the sources that I typically was. And as a man of my size, I have to get a bit higher than the average person. So I just got to make sure I do it. Um, but yeah, like as long as you're meeting those macros, as long as you're getting your carbs and your fats and your protein, uh, every day for what's appropriate for your body. And there's, you know, online calculators for that. You should be fine. Um, again, I'm not a dietitian and I'm not a health expert, so I, I, I wouldn't exactly go to me for advice and I'm not making any specific health claims other than what I've personally read from, you know, the literature on the topic, but, um, you know, the, uh, American, uh, uh, well, they used to be called the uh, American Dietetic Association. Now they're called the American Nutrition. Uh, no, the it's not what they're called. It's the different thing. Yeah, the, uh, basically, lots of dietary organizations say that a vegan diet is healthy as long as you are doing the healthy things for it, right? Um, it, and and healthy, yeah. you know, obviously is a subjective term. But as you're, if you're meeting those macros, if you're getting your nutritional well, requirements like for the day, you know, like my problem. At one point in time, I had become vegan, mm -hmm. but I would be so active while working yep. that like, I, I would need to be able to go four hours, but two hours into my shift, I would really start like waning. And, and like, I'm kind of a skinny guy, even if I do eat a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, but man, uh, yeah, I, I, would, I was just curious. Um, right on. Yeah. Everybody has a different metabolism as well. Mm -hmm. And like, for me, I have a very, uh, high metabolism, particularly for someone my age, you know, it's unusually high. And so I get a lot of my energy from carbs and sugar. Um, I'll, some people can't do that. Depend, you're, you know, if you have a physical makeup or metabolism to where you, you know, uh, you can't eat certain types of food or otherwise it'll adversely affect your diet, then you can't do that. But energy for me is, is carbs and sugar. Protein doesn't give me energy at all. Actually, protein makes me want to fall asleep usually after I have uh, something like that. Uh, protein, protein is for muscle building. And if you're, you know, on a, a workout regimen where you're trying to build, then you absolutely would need more protein and have to find some sort of supplements, yes. substitutes, you know, it, for that. I'm not 
So that, you that can apply. eat the eggs, right? Pardon? Y'all can eat eggs? Like, that's all no, right? Like, not for eggs? Not for a vegan. For a vegetarian, that's appropriate because it's not a meat product. But a strict vegan is someone who doesn't eat any animal products, and that includes eggs. Eggs, milk, cheese, butter. Oh, oh man. Ice cream? It's hard. <laughs> You know, it, in one way, you can think of it as restrictive, um, but I've actually probably tried more food this year than I have in maybe the last like three or four, because I'm, I'm suddenly finding new combinations of foods and, and, and reading the names of vegetables I'd never heard of um, because I've been trying this thing. And um, you'd be surprised at how many things are out there to try. Now, again, that's with the, the privilege of living in a city where I can go to a supermarket that has a lot of options for me. It, it's, it's a lot easier for me than it's going to be for somebody that lives in a small town with 2000 people and maybe their largest grocery store is 30 minutes away. Like, you know, I've, I'm sensitive to people with those situations, <laughs> but like you just it, described me perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it, it's just, it's, it's, you know, and, and, and like any small step you take to reduce your meat intake is not only going to be good for us because like we don't need to eat meat every day, like, but it's also going to be good for the environment. Like, you know, uh, the UN has pointed this out yeah, and, and tons of environmental organizations. Um, like meat, yeah, meat based diets just aren't sustainable for a worldwide population. And, and, and the more that developing nations grow, the more the demand for meat is going to rise. And, and, and the ag animal agriculture industry is one of the greatest contributors to climate change that we have, period. Like uh, more so than all of our transportation infrastructure in this country. Like it's- And it it's, disturbs me. It, what disturbs mm -hmm. me is the processing like in which they go through. Like it, there's, yeah. That is what has turned me off from it, but, really. But, yeah. If you can do a meatless Monday, you're doing more than most people. And Yeah, so, I was going to say small yeah. steps, you know, just like reducing your carbon footprint. There's there's yeah. little things that we can do. We don't have to go. Comp Some of us don't have the luxury to not drive, you know, but um, we right. we many of us do have the option of maybe driving a hybrid car or a smaller car with, you know, lower emissions or whatever the case may be. But what it's whatever you can do, you do what you can do within your means, you know, yeah. and, it's and practical. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we answered your yeah, question there, yo. Yes. I do have a challenge though. Okay. Do y'all want to hear it? Sure. No challenges. To buy food and not have it wrapped in any plastic. Like, yeah. To buy food. There is some plastics that they're using uh, the plant sucrose to make what appears to be plastic like, but is biodegradable, which I, I'm cool with that stuff. And it's that stuff's really cool, but like the polypropylene, uh, the plastic packaging, like trying to go to the store and not buy any plastic, it is, it is a challenge. I don't know. Yeah, I, that's a challenge too, and that's something. It's, a, it's definitely something to be concerned about. There are, um, you know, there like in Austin, you know, you you they don't um, just give you grocery bags. You have to pay for it separately if you don't bring your own. I, I wish lots of other places did that um, because like we don't need as many plastic bags in the world, certainly. Um, and, and a lot of the, there's a vegan takeout place I like to go to here that, um, uh, that they have uh, uh, recyclable bags when they give you takeout and stuff. And so I, I, I like that. I wish more people were doing it, but yeah, like plastic consumption, that's another thing to worry about. And um that, of course, that's going to be in all of the foods that we have, not just vegan foods, right, where that's going to be a problem. But, yeah, it's a, I don't know if I could do a whole week without buying some form of plastic, though. You know, that's going to be hard. I Maybe I could if I really tried and I really narrowed my options down. I've already narrowed my options, you know, <laughs> um, to be quite yeah. frankly. But, hey, yeah, I, I, I don't know I, if I could. I would, I, say, that, I would yeah. say that this is where the devotion to recycling comes in and, mm. you know, I making sure that you are participating in a recycling program or hopefully you live in an area where recycling is is 
practiced, I do. And, you know, I don't, I, I try to make sure that all of my reusables are going into the correct bins and not just willy nilly throwing things away. And I think yeah. that that may be the best that some of us can do considering the prevalence of plastic in grocery shopping or any kind of shopping, frankly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you're buying food from the stores, I mean, that food is coming off of a truck and that's coming from a distribution center and that distribution center has to get it from whoever's making the product, you know, and so that part of the process is still going to be there if you're going on a vegan diet that's based off a supermarket and you're not growing your own stuff. So, you know, there's always going to be more things we can do. Um, and, and I'm trying to focus on, well, what can I do right now? What's reasonable for me to do and how can I educate myself? And maybe I should look into more of the plastic stuff too. You know, maybe that's a good thing to point out, but thanks for calling. Yo, I'm going to get to some other callers. I appreciate your question and I hope, um, we answered it, um, uh, to your liking. 